Welcome to Fixity Fix. I'm David and Sarah is behind the camera. Today we're going to be doing a transmission service on a fifth generation Toyota 4Runner. Ignore the old Ranger behind me. We'll start the 4Runner transmission service with a pan drop and filter change, then we'll move on to a full at-home transmission flush process, and finally we will top it all off with a fluid level check, which is a little more complicated than the old school dipstick method. Stay tuned and keep watching to the end because we'll have a few bloopers. Thanks for joining us. When you get under your forerunner, you're going to want to bring an oil drain pan, a five millimeter Allen key, a 10 millimeter socket with an extension, about six inches will do, and a 14 millimeter socket, as well as a 24 millimeter socket. You wanna make sure you can get your fill bolt off. If you can't get that off, you can't get fluid back in the transmission, and that's gonna be a problem. This one has a captive rubber washer on it, so you don't really need to replace that unless it's messed up in some way. We'll just reuse that when we put it back together, and then we want to make sure our level check bolt will come out. Now some fluid might come out of here. All right, we'll go ahead and remove the drain plug. We're going to let this drain. I'm measuring the fluid by weight and putting it back in by weight because transmission fluid expands when it gets warm and contracts when it gets cold so you'll have a different amount of ounces or quarts coming out or going in depending on temperature but if you do it by weight it will always be the same the um, weight won't change, but the volume will for transmission fluid. It's an extra step, and you can see that I have two pounds, one ounce written on my oil drain pan. So I can just weigh the pan and then subtract two pounds, one ounce from it, and then I know exactly how much fluid came out. So we have only two bolts left holding the transmission pan in. They are on diagonal corners and both bolts are loosened almost all the way. So now the pan may pull off just with hand force or we might need a rubber mallet to knock it loose. You'll be surprised how much oil is left in this pan when we remove these bolts. Oh, this is where the magic happens. Look at all that transmission fluid in the pan. I'm gonna just dump it in here because roughly that amount needs to go back in to the forerunner when we start putting it back together. And you'll see there are one, two, three, four transmission pan magnets in these indents. And don't be alarmed, they're going to have metal schmectagus on them. Uh, that's normal. You just don't want to see any big chunks. Um, normal wear and tear is going to have a little bit of metallic uh, shavings on each of those. And that's why they're there. They're there to take those shavings out of the flow stream so they don't get into the gubbins of the transmission. And now we're going to remove the transmission filter. And there are four bolts, one on each corner, holding it in. So we loosen those bolts. is going to have some transmission fluid in it. Got to pop it out with the O-ring. And then fluid falls out, of the, falls out of the valve body. It's another good reason to change the filter because you just get more fluid changed that way if you're not going to do a complete flush. So if you can see in here, this is the fine mesh screen that also gets a lot of schmectagus in there. So it's just good to change it out. 
there are all different varieties of quality for these filters. Um, I prefer the Wix brand in general. They have good metal in them uh, and seem to be well made compared to what else is available. You want to make sure you can account for the rubber o-ring. You can see on this filter all the metal detritus from the transmission. Again, normal um, as long as it's etch-a-sketch looking. You might have noticed that I loosened something I shouldn't have loosened. We're gonna reconnect that now. We'll torque that bolt back when we uh, check the torque on all of the valve body bolts on here. Those are all torqued to seven foot-pounds. All these different valve body bolts holding this valve body on. As the valve body heats up and cools off and heats up and cools off, typically the gasket in there will end up wearing and shrinking or swelling, so it's a good idea to check the torque of valve body bolts on any transmission that you're pulling the pan on. It will just perform better and last longer. Just make sure that you've looked up the correct torque. You're going to need to have some lint-free cloth or paper towels here for this process. You do not want to get junk into your transmission pan. So the old gasket comes off. I highly recommend using rubber gaskets in this process rather than paper or cork. Uh, you won't have to use any gasket sealer and it takes away some of the mess and it just usually seals better in my experience with modern transmissions. You have these four magnets but you'll take each of these off and clean it with a rag. Put them on a clean towel just for safekeeping. Polarity of this magnet doesn't matter when you put it back in the pan because the magnets aren't close together. Because I know some nerd's gonna ask that question. This transmission pan has a little raised edge that pushes the gasket against the body of the transmission. Just make sure all that is intact. We're gonna wipe out this pan really well. There is some debate over whether or not to use brake clean to clean out the inside of a transmission because um, it might cause the finish inside of the pan to deteriorate and get into your transmission. Uh, this pan looks really nice and clean, so I'm just gonna wipe it out really well with lint-free rags until it looks super clean and we'll put it all back together. Put on a new crush washer. Not a good idea to reuse old crush washers. There's a little shoulder on these crush washers that goes up toward the pan. Make sure your new gasket fits your transmission pan. And make sure to line up all the holes there is one right orientation for this thing. Go ahead and put a few bolts through in each corner. You want to make sure all the holes in the pan line up through the gasket holes and into the transmission casing. A few of these bolts in place will get us started. Another quick tip, when you move your transmission pan under the car, cover it with a lint-free paper towel or cloth that's very clean just so you don't drop anything in it from the undercarriage of the car. Right, starting in the middle, we're going to tighten all the valve body bolts. Eighty inch-pounds. Eighty inch pounds, seven foot pounds. All these are good. Just a good habit to get into. If 
You might have noticed when I was taking off the transmission filter, I made a little mistake and I was sitting on this side of the transmission, excuses, excuses, um, pandering to uh, the camera uh, and just buzzing out these four bolts holding in the transmission filter and I accidentally <laughs> ran out this 10 millimeter bolt that holds on this retention spring um, in the transmission. So I needed to find out the torque value. I don't have a shop manual because I don't want to spend five million dollars on something I can usually find the answers to on the internet. So I reached out to um, the Toyota Forerunner.org internet forum and got an answer back in like five minutes. It is also seven foot-pounds. This Wix transmission filter comes with a new o-ring that fits. Make sure you have a little bit of transmission fluid on your o-ring and seat the o-ring in the transmission pan filter. This can only go on one way where all four bolts fit. So line it up where this output hole goes into this hole to input fluid into the transmission transmission filter bolts I'm getting them finger tight being meticulously sure not to cross thread anything to seven foot pounds Make sure your transmission casing doesn't have anything obstructing the fit of the new gasket and pan. Double check to make sure no rats or mice have crawled into it while you're not looking. Run in to hold the pan up. All the while checking to make sure you're Gasket is not moving out of place. The torque on these bolts is five foot pounds. That's a ridiculously low amount. It's un American, I tell you. That's going to be five times 12 to get to inch pounds, 60 inch pounds. So we'll set our tiny whittle quarter inch drive torque wrench to 60. Snug up your check bolt. Again, we'll be pulling that out, rewashering, replacing, and torquing after we've done the level check. Final inspection, and then we fill it up with some fluid and then replace our fill bolt. From the whole pan drop procedure, we measured out seven pounds and 14 ounces of fluid. And again, that will not change regardless of the temperature of the transmission fluid coming in or out. Uh, on my <laughs> homemade measuring jug from cat litter containers, we measured out four and a half quarts. That means we'll put in about five quarts because you wanna add about six or so ounces more um, fluid than you take out so that you can do the fluid check procedure only once without having to add fluid. It'll just drain out. We're going to add back eight pounds and four ounces of fluid to compensate for that six ounces. Seven pounds, 14 ounces came out. Eight pounds, four ounces is going to give us six ounces over. So we're going to do the tear on the scale for the transmission filler here. It's set to pounds and turning it on with the container on top of here uh, 
minuses out automatically the weight of the container. There is a little bit of fluid in the bottom because I know that's how much fluid remains when I pump in. Just pour this kind of container sideways and it won't splatter as much. All right, a little over eight pounds and four ounces. So that'll do. That'll do, pig. We're going to pump all of this back into the transmission. Now that you've measured out the exact amount of fluid that came out, either measuring by volume, as long as your transmission is the same temperature as your new fluid going in, or by weight, if the transmission fluid is still pretty hot, add back the same amount of new fluid that you drained out from your transmission. There's a number of ways to do this. I'm using a, a pump bottle, which is very convenient getting at it from below. You could also rig up a hose and funnel and do it from above or a, another type of pump strategy. Put your fill plug back in and torque it to 27 foot-pounds. Torque your drain pan bolt to 15 foot-pounds. We're on the right side or passenger side of the car. This is the radiator. And these are your transmission cooler hoses. This one here marked in blue is near the, near to the top. And then the one marked with the pink line is the one on the bottom. The one marked in the blue is the return line that goes from the cooler back to the transmission. That is the line you want to tap into with your clear vinyl hose. You can remove this clip, pull the hose off, and be prepared for some transmission fluid to come out and then slide your 3 8 clear vinyl hose, uh, internal diameter, 3 8 internal diameter vinyl hose onto this metal tube to receive the transmission fluid that comes out. Another way to get to the transmission cooler hoses is to pop off this dust shield. is in the front right or passenger side. Behind this plastic dust shield you'll find this line here which is the transmission oil return line. Remove this clip and then connect this rubber hose using a brass barbed connector to your clear vinyl hose. I'll show you this in a moment. This is the line on top. Every time the line on top here on this car is going to be the return line from the cooler to the transmission. The one on bottom is going to bring fluid from the transmission into the cooler. We move this clip back with some needle nose pliers and then we pop off this hose. Doesn't make too much of a mess. The clear vinyl hose with a 3 8 inch internal diameter and a brass barbed fitting. We're going to fish this hose out that we just popped off and insert it into the transmission hose and then we'll run the other end of this into a measured receptacle so we can see exactly how many quarts come out. As a note, you don't want to take out more than two quarts at a time or the pump will run dry and likely cause you trouble down the road, as it were. You can see I added another vinyl hose to the transmission return line uh, and let it run into a drain bucket just in case there's extra that comes out on that side. Sometimes that happens and I just want this to be a neat procedure. Now that you've tapped into your return line from your transmission cooler to the transmission, that is the clear vinyl hose on the right in the picture coming down into the empty container that's marked for each quart that'll come in. You'll have an assistant start the engine 
and you'll watch the input to the empty container and you'll have the assistant turn off the engine when you get to two quarts. Do not drain more than two quarts at once or you'll cause some problems with the transmission pump. On the left, you'll see a pump container filled with fresh transmission fluid. After you pump out two quarts, you'll use the pump to pump two quarts in to the transmission's fill hole. And we'll do that about four times to get a full flush of the old transmission fluid out and replaced with brand new transmission fluid. I'm only showing you one cycle of pumping out two quarts of fluid and pumping two quarts back in because it's repetitious and I don't want to bore you. How many two-quart cycles you need to go through depends on whether you did a pan drop filter replacement before you're doing the flush. If you did that, you've already taken care of four quarts, and that means you have eight quarts left to have fully replaced the approximately 12 quarts this transmission holds. So with two quarts per cycle, that gives you four cycles to run if you did the pan drop. If you didn't do the pan drop filter replacement, you'll need to replace all 12 quarts, and that'll mean six cycles. All right, start her up. Turn it off. Good. And I'm going to put exactly two quarts back in. From the bottom, this has six quarts in it, and I'm going to put two quarts into the transmission. <laughs> Sounds like the transmission likes it. <laughs> So again, two quarts came out, and we'll stop the fill when we reach the two quart line. Then we'll do this again, two quarts at a time until the fluid coming out looks like this. If you can point to the fluid coming out, you can see how much darker it is in that hose than it is in this hose. on two quarts. There it is. And we turn off the filler. So filler plug back in, finger tight. Make sure you keep up with that rubber O-ring. And I'm gonna do it by feel. So let me see those negative, where's your torque wrench? Comments. Calling out the haters. Okay, now we need to reattach our filler hoses. I'm taking off the clear vinyl hose that I put on the transmission return line. This was not necessary, it turned out. Nothing came out of this, so um, I think I'll skip that step next time. Pull that hose out of the way, and then I'm going to replace the hose that came off. Now note, this hose is down in the drain pan because it's going to catch the rest of the fluid. It has yet to come out. All right, we'll let the rest of the fluid from the hose drain out. Push this hose back on here. I'm too lazy to go get the specific tool in the toolbox for doing this. Would you like me to do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to suffer and struggle. Did I mention you can do this from the top too? Actually, it's pretty hard to get at that top one from around all the different stuff.
And Bob's your uncle. Well, he's your uncle anyways here. <laughs> You'll remember that we took off this dust shield. It just goes back in with push to fit body clips. All right, now we'll put the wheel back on and then we'll run the uh, fluid level setting procedure. All right, we need to set the car into temperature mode and I don't have an OBD reader that's capable of that. So we need to jump pins four and 13. And interestingly, it doesn't matter which way you count. Watch this one, two, three, four. That's one pin that needs to be jumped to five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So if you count in the other direction, one, two, three, four, you get the same pins, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the Toyota OBD2 port is a Zen Koan. I'm just using a paper clip, so it's gonna be a little bit awkward. With pins 4 and 13 and the OBD2 port jumpered, we have the car in park, we have the emergency brake on, we have the garage doors open because the engine will be running, the car is on absolute level ground, and it has to be to get the level correct, we start the engine. With the pins jumpered, the dash is going to give you a lot of different pretty flashing lights. That's okay, it's supposed to do that. Now, we take the gear shift and we go back and forth from neutral to drive, drive to neutral, and so on, for greater than six seconds, and then back in park. When we put it back in park, <clears throat> that P is gonna either say D for a few seconds and then turn blank, and it'll, it will say D again when the transmission fluid gets up to about 100 degrees. It will be flashing D if the transmission fluid is too hot, and then you have to let the car cool off for a while and try again. So let's engage the procedure. Okay, we've been driving around a little while, so it's D, the temperature is just right. So the car is in park, the emergency brake is on. We can go ahead and pull the pin out of the OBD2 port, and that's just fine as long as the car stays running. This is a good time to check for any leaks. We left the check plug a little bit loose. We can go ahead and pull it out. And there is the excess fluid running out. We're going to let this excess fluid drain with the engine idling. Yes, the engine is supposed to be idling. This fluid will drain until it trickles. And there is the trickle we are looking for. Now that the trickle is right, we've installed a new washer on our drain plug. And then we tighten it to 15 foot-pounds. The responsible thing to do after any repair or maintenance is a test drive. Good chance to pat yourself on the back or worse, discover if you got something wrong. It started up fine. There's uh, no dash problems, nothing coming up here, nothing telling me anything's wrong. Sounds good. Let's roll down the windows because it's a beautiful day. And because it's a forerunner, we're gonna roll down the back window too. All right. Well, reverse and first are working fine. Let's go say hi to Sarah. Talking to you. You're talking to the world. We're doing oh. a test drive. Hi, world. How's it feeling? <laughs> it feels good so far for good. the 60 feet I've driven it. <laughs> good low speed. I did change the oil and rotate the tires while the car was up on the lift. All that's checking out. There were no leaks at all. Feels really good. Man, 
crisp shifts already. Maybe I'm just feeling what I want to feel. Would that be a shift SIBO effect? <laughs> That's already a difference. Driving by the parts store and not stopping. That's a new one. After these people finish being in our way, we're gonna step on it and see how this thing downshifts. Just make sure that downshift is activating well. Yep, downshift in and out's working fine. Yeah, much snappier. We're gonna call this good. Thanks for watching. And uh, I hope I've earned a thumbs up there and you might even consider subscribing if you're interested in car maintenance and fixing other stuff. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Next round, just take a little patience. I don't want to disturb any camera angles. <laughs> oh, the sacrifices we make for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Dexka Fix is here for you. <laughs> Taking five times longer than it normally would. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, don't leak everywhere. <laughs> I'm just bragging on you. I'm just showing you what it would be like without the vent. <laughs> some saw pelmet over here. <laughs> so from the center out, we want to make sure these are all torqued to 80 inch pounds. They're 10 millimeter. Look at me grabbing a nine millimeter. <laughs> I'm going to get my nine. Can he roll over to the socket drawer without having to stand up? Oh, the crocodile is very angry.